In this video, I want to cover the brand new updated IRS ERC checklist because I believe this updated checklist is much clearer and it gets to the point. Now, as I go through this, I'm going to look at the interactive checklist that's online at irs.gov. All you have to do is say IRS ERC. Through this process, I'm going to talk about the eligibility checklist. Then I'm going to go to what we call the IRS partner checklist. And then finally, I'm going to take a couple of scenarios and walk you through it to see this is not as complex as one might think it is. The hottest issue right now with ERC is the IRS has started a phase of if you want to withdraw the claim, which is in another video, or if you want to return the check, those two options are now on irs.gov. The third one they're getting ready to announce is if you cash the check, how to return it. What this brings us to the point of not how to file the ERC credit. This is how to determine if the ERC credit qualifies. Very, very different view. So just a little background. I've been reviewing several of these. I've got other firms sending them to me. Uh, you know, uh, the interesting note as a practitioner regulated, I can only charge by the hour, which should be the appropriate way. Um, so as we go through, I'm going to walk you through how many different times or how many different indicators. If you don't have this, you don't have this, you don't qualify. And I'll just give one that's the most important one I'm seeing and we'll cover it in the, in the program, but I want to, I, I want to stop and, and, and grab you. The number one thing I'm seeing is supply chain. Everywhere I turn supply chain supply, I see some that it's two lines and it employees don't show up to work, which is a business decision. You don't qualify. And the other one is a mandated shutdown with no dates or supply chain. But if you're relying upon the supply chain, small business or practitioner, I'm going to say you have a 99.9 .9 plus percent chance of the ERC credit is wrong. I just can't say that enough. If you, if you get to this point in the video and go, that's what my ERC documentation says, or this is what I sent to those marketing companies, um, you better take a really good look and get an opinion from a practitioner that's regulated by Circular 230. So let's kind of jump into this presentation. Um, and here's, let's, I've gone already here on my screen to IRS.gov Employee Retention Credit Eligibility Checklist help to understand this, you know, uh, this complex credit. I think as we walk through it, again, for most people, you're going to be able to come to a pretty good decision, small business, you've got the claim in front of you. So what we're going to do is I ask you to get out the documentation that you provided, whoever did your ERC credit, and look at that as we go through this. Because what I'm finding, a lot of these are qualified on one piece of paper. Uh, and I'm actually looking at uh, ERC claims that the money has been received. It's a really tough phone call when you call and say, I hate to tell you the problem. But let's continue. This, on, on this page, it says, on, it says uh, you know, part A checklist uh, for your eligibility. We're going to walk through that. B, claiming the ERC that if you're eligible. And C, resolving an ERC claim. So, so we're going to go part A, we'll work through that. And then if you qual, if you believe you qualify, then you go to part B to qualify. So going on down this real quick, I want to go down to the eligibility checklist. It says this tool can help a business or other organization quickly decide if they may qualify for the employee retention credit. They may qualify because I say it this way in a film, in a, YouTube I did that I had door number one, door number two. Door number one was about gross receipts. That's not where the fraud is. We're over here in door number two under a mandated required government shutdown of your business or operations due to COVID-19. All right, one, did you operate a trader business or tax exempt organization? And two, have employees and pay wages to them between March 13th, 2020 and December 31st, 2021. So I paid wages, so I'm gonna say yes. It takes me now to question number two. Question number two, did your trader business experience the required decline in gross receipts during the eligibility period in 2020 or the first three calendar quarters, January through September of 2021? 
That's door number one. So if you're watching this video, the second question is door number one, your tax person, your tax professional, uh, like at our office, we were going through every quarter calculating whether you qualified or not. So that's a whole different test. So in that case, it says experience no. Well, that takes us to question number three. Are you claiming the ERC because of a supply chain issue? And in, in, in right here at this point, this intersection, I'm going to star question number three. Because four out of five, if not nine out of ten, of the ERC claims that I see, these are claims, again, the check has been paid to the taxpayer, the small business. Either the reason, or most of the reasons, or always, for the most part, they say supply chain. I'm going to, I'm just going to step out of tax law right now. Let's go to a simple example of supply chain. Um, I did a video on that, uh, I believe it was in August, the IRS came out with a chief counsel memo on supply chain. And after I did that video, I said, it's not impossible, but it's improbable that you qualify by supply chain. You don't have to look at anything else in your application. Go to the reason you sent the person preparing that said you qualified for ERC, and look at that. And if it's all about supply chain, employees won't show up, that's not the reason. Let's, let's trace, something got shipped from China, it comes to a port, it gets loaded on a rail car, it goes on a truck, and it gets delivered to, to, to uh, your place of business. Or it gets, it's brought in the United States and it's flown on an airplane here. Here's the reason why I'm making those connections is that how a supply chain works in the real world, you start with, here's, here's this cup. Who made this cup? Well, what happens is, is I've got to go back, well, this cup isn't available. Well, why is it not available? Supply chain, that's not good enough. I have to go start with the manufacturer of that cup. Were they under a pandemic order? Then I have to come back and say, oh, was it manufactured outside the United States? See, the, the order has to be within the United States. So supply chain in another country doesn't work. Well, if it couldn't be delivered by a truck, let's say it was UPS, well, what about FedEx or the U.S. Postal Service? So you have to look for alternative. Well, in those memos, they had an example where the product, the alternative substitute product costs 35% more. That's a business decision. So what I'm saying is, is when you look at your documentation and you're going to say the word supply chain, what you have to look is to see Step in the shoes so you're not shut down, but the supplier that's supplying you is shut down, or the truck bringing it here is shut down. But that supplier then has to make up more than nominal of your operations, which is more than 10%. So in that light, you've got to realize that if you're not documenting your own shutdown, you've got to have the supplier, the, the food chain, and you have to go all the way back. And at any point in time, if they're not to shut down, then it's not to supply chain. The simple thing is look at your application. And if you use supply chain and you don't have the date to start or stop for each one of the people in the supply chain and you haven't looked for alternative goods or you haven't looked for alternative delivery, then you don't qualify. And I, I have yet to see one where they've run the supply chain. I'll repeat that. I'm reviewing several of them. I'm talking to a couple of other people that are reviewing these. So this is at a national level. And what we're finding out is nobody. I have yet to see the very first one. And these friends I'm talking to, they have yet to see the very first one in the supply chain. They actually go all the way back. So, but what I do want to do on question three, supply chain, I'm going to tap on this link and there's a frequently asked question, supply chain that's at that link. There's one question. And it goes through very good to explaining the, what all you need it had to be a, the supply, uh, the, the supplier's governmental order. You need to show that. See that right there? The IRS will provide a narrow limited exception. However, it applies only when the employer absolutely could not operate without supplier's product. Absolutely could not operate. Larry's layperson I interpret that as more than nominal because in the other part of the notice 2021-20, it says that they're more than nominal. So I think when we look here, this applies only when the employer absolutely could not operate without the supplier's product and the supplier was fully or partially shut down. In addition, 
So this is plus, not or. It's an and. In addition to having a supplier's government order, you will need to show that. The government order caused the supplier to suspend operations. It has to be, I'm back to my same old thing, whether it's your operations or the supply chain operations, it has to be a mandated government order shutdown or suspension due to COVID-19. And it's only from the date, depend, it'll say you qualify for the quarter, but the payroll, the qualified payroll, is only from the date the mandate had started to the mandate stopped. Okay. So let's stop and look. Look at what you sent. To, see what you sent to the scammer, the scheme, or a, a good practitioner. Did, did you send them the date it started and stopped? If you didn't, you don't qualify. You don't qualify for the supply chain, and you don't qualify for operations. This, see, this is what I call stepping in the shoes. See, this, this would be for you and your operations. Did, did you have a government order? You know, did it shut your operations down partially or fully? You couldn't obtain the supplier good material elsewhere, regardless of cost, and caused a full or partial suspension of your business operations. If your gross receipts went up and your profit went up, how would it cause a full or partial suspension of your operations? So I think I'm pausing here for a second. These four rules, see, it says apply only when the employer absolutely could not operate without the supplier's product. Then, in addition, the government order had to cause the supplier to spend operations, and you couldn't get the supplies elsewhere or find alternative sources, um, and um, you paid more. You paid more, it's okay. But it had to cause a full or partial suspension of your operations. That's why I said, I, I can't hit on this enough. One, because this is what I see on almost every single reason for getting a refund or getting the credit. And two, it's the fact that I am not seeing any documentation of these steps on each supply, each link in the supply chain. So when I see that and I see supply chain, if it's just supply chain, it doesn't qualify because they're not giving the start and the stop. So here's, here's where I'm going. I hear the marketers say, oh, this is complex, and they're making it complex. They want to read it into the law. But right here, if I just take common sense on supply chain and follow these steps, that's why I said it's virtually impossible. But I'm spending a little time here because this is a brand new checklist. I'm going through speaking on what the rules are December 1st, 2023. This is the final, I mean, this is the latest, hottest thing going. I'm gonna go back to question three in our checklist. So the other one is supply chain AM 2023-005. This is so critical in supply chain. After this video, please go to this location, and we. The, I actually have a video on these, but it's got five different scenarios on supply chain, and every single scenario, you're going to end up with a no answer. You can't assume supply. You can't assume a mandate. Oh, it reminds me of a video I did on this one organization had the map of the United States, and so I live in Missouri. I clicked on Missouri. It pops up, and it says shutdown and shutdown for this presentation. I look for it, but. It had shut down, I believe, three times on the front page. And then it had this may not be all of the shutdowns for Missouri. I opened up this spreadsheet and I looked down these dates. Well, these dates start and cover me for a little over a year. But they're based on Missouri governor's orders. So they have the reasons down through it. But what I did in that video, I went out and I looked at those orders. Those orders to keep the militia, you know, available is like three of them. One of them was uh, masking. So the whole point is when I got done with the list, you know what I didn't find in any of them? Mandated government shutdown or suspension of your operations. They never addressed business. And unless the order says the business, if the government order, and there is no federal government order, and there is no OSHA order, there is only state, local, municipality, city, whatever. But in that order, it has to say that it is a mandated order from a government, qualified government body 
related to COVID-19. These are very good examples. The fifth one I kind of call, it's neat because I call it the grocery store, the convenience store example. And it's the fact it tells you, you got to look at each supplier. So they have various suppliers and they're literally saying a grocery store probably would not qualify. I know there's some exceptions. See, for example, if there's limited seating in a restaurant, see, that's a restriction on a business. Okay. But if it's social distancing, that is restriction on the population and not the business. Face masking, that's on society. That's not saying business, it's saying the society will wear it. So if you got more questions about supply chain, go to that, uh, go to that AM-2023-005 because it's got five great examples. I don't know how you can make it through it, but it's really set me up for, for the next question. And that is whenever I go to, no, I get question four. So up to now we've got employees uh, we've not experienced a decline in gross receipts, but, and we don't qualify for supply chain. Now we're going to what I call door number two. Door one is gross receipts test. That was at question two. Door number two is at question four after we've gone through the supply chain. What does that mean there? We're getting back to the core, a, gov a, a government mandated shutdown. Okay. I can't express that enough. If you're in supply chain, you've got to do the steps here in question four is for you and your operations. Then if you're advising as a tax professional, this is you're going to look at their operations with them and you're going to look at the following. Was the operation of your business or organization fully or partially suspended by a government bold order due to COVID-19 pandemic during 2020 or 2021? I'm going to stop there for a second. Uh, I, I got a call the other day and wanted to know, uh, I'm starting to see OSHA starting to pop up as an excuse. Well, OSHA requires this. Well, if that was the case, one, every business in America would qualify. Okay? So it, they didn't. And number two, there's no federal government orders. I mentioned earlier in this presentation. And three, it's, it's the fact that if there was an OSHA regulation prior to COVID, it wouldn't apply because what is said here, it says a government order due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So I hear all of this stuff, and as we walk through here, if you really keep it simple, you can get, you can get to the right answer. So let's get to the right answer, okay? We're gonna go back here to question four. The order must be government order, not guidance, a recommendation or a statement. As I just referred to that chart that I saw, and that this was a presentation on how to audit proof your ERC credit. Think about it. It was misleading. That, that map is now gone. I went out and checked last week. That map is now gone. So I was going to use it in class because it's public information and uh, it has been removed. Uh, so I think that in of itself makes a statement. The, the word government order. See, it's not a government order. It's a government order due to the COVID pandemic. That government order cannot be guidance or recommendation and it must be due to COVID-19 pandemic and must be fully or partially suspend your operations. So when you read an order, if that order doesn't satisfy question number four, it's an order, but it's not a government mandated order by a qualified government entity related to COVID-19. So when you get to there, this one right here, question four, I star it as the biggest reason of or I should say one of the probably one of the biggest reasons why a lot of these applications don't qualify. And one of the first things I do is when I review, and I'm reviewing several of these, I'm getting calls daily to review. The first thing I think, let me see your documents you sent to them. And in sending those documents to them, first thing I look for is your government. If it's not gross receipts, I look for your government order. And I look to see if it meets this qualification right here. So this is something small business or for those practitioners, there's a lot of practitioners that do not do payroll. There's a lot of practitioners that did not do ERC. So this video is again, as I said at the beginning, not to tell you how to fill it out, but to tell you what you have to get through before you do fill it out. So, um, so back to question four, 
you can only claim ERC for the periods which was affected and your operations were suspended. Okay, only for the periods. So let me give you an example. I was doing one in another state. I asked for, I said, did they ask you for your mandated period? There was this pause on the phone. It, they, he was already telling me, no. I said, well, what they asked for? He goes, well, they never asked me for my the mandated period. I said, so what did you send them? I said, is it this half page of how you qualify? Yep. The word mandate wasn't even on the qualifying page. There was eight reasons, and not one of them was a mandate. Now, I've seen another one where one of the reasons was a mandate, but it said, a man yes, we were under a mandated shutdown, but it didn't say the date or the time. So I, I can't appeal to you enough. Small business and practitioners that didn't do ERC credit, these simple steps will tell you more likely than not, you don't qualify, and if you think there's a question, then get it to a professional that can look at it to assist. So let's say in this example I was going to do, let's say it's from March 15th to June 16th. All right. At that point in time, if the people got PPP, which most people around here did, they wouldn't qualify for the ERC because you can't double dip. So, that, so at that point in time, you could have had a government order, but you can't double dip. So let's move it to where it went on out to September. Well, from the period that, so let's say the mandate started March 13th and ended September 1st. That's covering, you know, that's so, and they had PPP and it ran up to, let's say, June 16th. At June 16th, they were still under a mandate, and, but they still got to go to September 1st. Well, what would happen if it was under a government mandated order, they would qualify for the first, second, and third quarter, but you do the ERC on the second quarter. Now, see, I said the quarters would qualify. Step two is what wages qualify, and here's where the mistake is made. Because if you read the law, it says under door one or door two, if you have whatever that exposure, either gross receipts or government shutdown, you qualify for the period, but it's only for the qualified wages. So qualified wages here is from June 16th, because we used PPP prior, June 16th to September 1st. So we'd have a, a short period, about two weeks in the second quarter, and then we would have July and August in the third quarter we'd qualify for. So as you can see, it's from the date the mandate is started to the date the mandate had ended. No more. And what I see on these, they qualify for the whole quarter. Well, so another indicator, so first I look at, you know, was there a mandate? No. If there was, did they stop at the last day of the mandate? It stopped. So in all these, I see five and six quarters. So when I see five and six quarters and they didn't send a mandate, you probably don't qualify. That does not take complexity. That takes simple, that's what the law says. So I, I think with that, I'm going to go on down and say, okay, um, yes, I do. And it says, yes, you may be eligible for ERC. And then look for more examples on iris.gov, ERC qualifying. We've already been to that FAQ, et cetera. So when you get done with that, then you're going to go to Part B and claim that ERC. So that's kind of a walk through. You can see the questions here. Your eligibility, I got employees on one. Two, I didn't experience the gross receipts decline door number two, I mean door number one. Three, supply chain, we realize you really can't qualify. If you do, I'd like for you to send one to me because I'll put it on YouTube and say here's one place it does qualify. Uh, and then that's that's three. And then four, you qualify only during the mandated period. At that point in time, see question four, what they say you may be, notice here they say you may be eligible. See. When the mandated door is open from the date the mandate starts till it stops, that period, that wages paid in that period may qualify. But now what I would have added to this is that you have to show more than nominal impact. What does that mean? Is that I was in a government shutdown. I made more money. My gross receipts went up. My profit went up. What, what's my impact? I made more money. Why would I qualify? So my gross, I didn't qualify under gross receipts in the 2021 with a 20% decline. So I'm saying that very few people are going to qualify under this 
because if they'd had a major drop in receipts, because the people that were shut down, their people went to unemployment. This is mainly for people that were in a government mandated shutdown and their operations was partially suspended. If they were fully just suspended, they don't have any wages. So this impact is for those that are the normal uh, small business that might qualify is a small business that's being, that is an essential business that was not fully shut down. And the measurement is, were you partially? And when you look at the supply chain examples, you can actually apply that back to step four, the government operation. So again, where it says you may be eligible, um, there you better put the impact it has to be more than nominal. All right, what I want to do is slide on down on this, and there is a, there is a uh, retention, uh, down here it says printable checklist for IRS partners. If you need a printable version of this resource, here it is. So I'm going to pull this up because some people like the Q&A, some people like this checklist. So here's the checklist. Notice that it goes through the, you know, part, it's the same reading as before. Part A, it's put in a chart form. And one, did you operate a trader business and have employees and pay wages? That's the exact first question in our, what I call the smart decisions we just did. So if yes, go to two, you know, you can see it flows, it flows the, the, the same way. The thing I look at in this, this gives you more reasons and more explanation than just the yes and no we just did. You know, here, so in one while ago, I said yes. So if yes, go to number two. Number two, did you experience a decline there? In question two in the smart decision tree, I said no. That took me down to three, the supply chain. And again, supply chain is the most common reason and it's most likely the reason you don't qualify. And then when we get down here to the uh, question four, supply chain and three didn't apply. Let's go four. We're recapping what we just did. Uh, was the operation of your business or organization fully or partially suspended? Again, we're back to that on your operations. If you can telework, it, you don't qualify. I, I think, again, we make this so much more complex. Under that one, if, if I have number four, as I said a couple of minutes ago, number four, if you have a government order suspension shutdown, that doesn't mean you qualify. That means during the time period the mandate is on, those wages qualify if the impact of COVID-19 is more than nominal. And I think that's so important because what, what can't be pulled out of this checklist is that remark. Door number two is open. You're in a mandated period of your operations. When you open the door, did your operations continue business as usual? You may have done some remote stuff. First indicator, did your gross receipts change? Because that's the measure over on door number one. Were you required to shut down for a time period for cleaning? Now, it, you can't just do additional cleaning and that qualify. But the point of it is, I'm just giving some anecdotal examples that while that door is open, and actually what I'm gonna do, is here, here's, here's one of them. Uh, and we, this is one of those how you qualify. So from the time door two is open to the treasury, that means we're in a mandated government shutdown of your operations partially or fully. You say, well, I still operate. I'm essential. Notice this is how I qualified on this one. Full shutdown, no. Partial shutdown, well, I was under partial shutdown. Does that qualify me? No, I have to prove it. Supply chain, we now know that's no. Interruption of business operations. These are warm fuzzies. If this is why I'm qualifying, don't you think common sense would tell me I don't qualify? Because out of this list, I'm going to ask you the big question. It's your business. When you check one of these, and all these companies were very similar, you, you use this as guidance to see while the mandate is open. So one, they don't ask me if there's a mandate. Two, I need to look at the mandate. But these questions should be saying, how were you impacted? So supply chain, how were you impacted? Give me the detail. Interruption of business operations. What does that mean? See, because on this one, um, I checked a couple of these. 
interruption of operations and partial shutdown and I qualified. What did they ask me? Nothing. No quantitative number. So if there's, so all I'm trying to say is they, these kind of questions, they don't qualify you for the six quarters. They may be indicators while the door is open to a mandated government shutdown. So that's where the big disconnect. And then again, repeatedly, I continuously hear the remark. Well, they told me I qualified. Did they ask you about each period? No. Did they ask you about mandates? No. So again, I come to this question number four. Number four, if you say yes to, that does not mean you qualify. That means you may qualify after you show impact while that short period, the door is open from the day the mandate is started to end those wages and those wages only, not other quarters. And the reason why I'm driving four home is I'm connecting what I continuously see. No mandated provided uh, supply chain as a general term, as we just saw in that checklist. And they don't even ask me when the mandate started or stopped. Then we're going to go on down. I've kind of killed it here. Uh, and then where your recovery startup business, that is a separate question. And there, that's a, a start business is pretty well a, a calculated uh, number and pretty straightforward. So, so with that, I, I think I'm kind of the end of reviewing this. Remember what we covered this morning is all new as of last Thursday night. It was put out on the web last Thursday night. So that's why I'm kind of making this a news alert. So real quick, it, it, we're kind of to the end of this, but I just want to step back for a second and do a simple summary to help you, the small business or you, the accountant, when they walk in and say, I got the credit. What do I do? Well, you, you, the accountant, you have to determine whether or not that client qualifies before you can go back and do the amended 20 and 21 return and deduct the fee on this year's return. I'm going to do a separate video on that. But the important thing at this point in time, I want to walk through for everybody some just common sense questions to ask as you're reviewing your application, whether you're going to, looking at withdrawing it, you filed it, you've got a check, or you want to, you may want to check to see if you need to, to, re, to repay it. Okay, so let's, let's just get out of the minutia and let's just step back and, and kind of summarize. If I was, if for a second, you're going to give me a phone call and I'm going to answer it and you're going to say, Larry, I want you to review this. Now, I'm not going to go through all the steps that I do in my review, but I'm going to give you some indicators I might ask on the phone that will help you understand. Because one thing for me to tell somebody they qualify or they don't qualify, and it's another thing for them to understand why they qualify or don't qualify. See, as a tax professional, I want my client to understand why. Because if they don't understand why, it's kind of like in somebody, a marketing company say, invest in the latest whatever, late night TV or on the radio, uh, first thing is that's a marketing company, most likely. They're not going to tell you why. They're going to say you qualify. So here's what we do. I'm going to answer. First question I'm going to say, I'm probably going to say who did it, the company, because that tells, because I've done enough, some of the companies, I know how they go through their process. But for you, it's going to be, you know, did you pay a fee? Was it a percentage? That's an indicator that's a marketing company, not a professional. Because, see, I as a professional, I can't charge you a fee. Or, excuse me, I can't. I charge you a fee. But I can't charge you a percentage. So I can't charge you 20 25%. And I'm not going to follow up with, well, if you want this, I can get you a loan advance. That has nothing to do with tax law. A fee, 20 25%? Probably not. But the next thing I'm going to say, how did you qualify? Why would I ask that? Because what I just said, I'm going to explain to you if I'm doing it, why? You qualified under gross receipts. Well, none of these are qualifying in 20, late 2022 and all year of 2023. Every one of them I've looked at, not one of them have, have qualified on gross receipts. That was already taken care of. So what they do is I say, well, what was your mandated period to you, the taxpayer? I hear a pause. That tells me they haven't asked you the mandated period. So I go, can you send me your file? And I want to know everything you sent to the person that qualified you. 
most of the time I see one of those checklists that I just showed you where they just check the boxes. That's mo that's how they did mine on all the secret shopping I did. Um, I just check some boxes. I send them the payroll. Well, I probably don't qualify. If I do, it's only for a, a certain period. So what did they ask me for? Did you tell them a mandate? Did you get a copy of the government order that shows the date started and the date stopped? If you didn't send them that, you probably don't qualify. So the key, the biggest thing I can say to you is get the information you sent. Now, what I do is when I get involved, the first thing I ask you to do is to request whoever did this to send a copy of your file. You'll be amazed. Some of them don't send anything. Some of them send back the payroll. Oh yeah, I'm on the rest of, but they, when you send back, I can't find where they've documented how you qualify or I'll see where they check what you put down, you know, supply chain with no reason, uh, government order check, you know, couldn't get employees. We couldn't get employees. It's not a pan. That's not a shutdown. That's a business decision. Happen to pay 35% more for product. That's a business decision. So again, it comes down, look at the, what you communicated and look at that stuff and see if it gives you these simple, straightforward answers. And I think through that, you're going to find out I may not. I'm trying to think about the reasons because it really does. It comes down the decisions being made on what you send to them and you want them to send your file back. But what I am finding, I can't say it enough times, is no documentation. I'm not finding documentation of the government shutdown. If I, a uh, couple of them, uh, the reasoning and communication back and forth in emails is the fact that they will, they will throw out some stuff that you qualify under. Uh, I've got one that said the IRS has approved their checklist. And on another video, I used that checklist and it looked like, might as well do it again. Warm fuzzies, I call them. It's just, it's just they're, they're changing the way of doing business operations. That's a government shutdown? No. Reduction in business income. Was it as a result of COVID-19? See, if you add that, and I'm going to go back, if you add reduction in business income, was that during a period of government mandated shutdown? Because if it was a bigger reduction, you would qualify under gross receipts. Interruption of business operations because of COVID government shutdown. Well, what was the period? See, if I checked that on the one I qualified, I qualified for all six quarters. They never asked me again about the mandate. Uh, ha, uh, finding employees and keeping them, it became difficult. What business in America did not have that problem? Almost every one of them had a problem getting employees. So uh, I, I'm just, it's, it's a reduction of service or goods you were able to offer to customers. My point is that might be an indicator with, with data, but please, I'm just, I am, I, I just can't believe all the marketing about how complex this okay. is. Because if the door's not open, the date the mandate starts to end, there is no COVID-19 impact.